In this video, we're going to continue our discussion as to how we can derive blue estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity by deriving the variance of OLS estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity. And remember, in the last video, we derived the variance of OLS estimators in the presence of homoscedastic errors, and we found it was equal to sigma squared times x primed x all to the power minus 1. Now, if we assume we have heteroscedasticity, then remember that this means that the variance of y given x is equal to sigma squared times some diagonal matrix omega, where the diagonal matrix omega is not equal to the identity matrix. And we're going to use this to help us derive the variance of OLS estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity. So remember that we derived in the last video, before we sort of substituted in sigma squared times the identity matrix i, that the variance of beta hat OLS, given that we have our matrix of our independent variables x, that was just equal to x primed x to the power minus 1 times x primed times the variance of y given x times x times x primed x to the power minus 1. And now if we substitute in our form of our variance, just being equal to sigma squared times omega, this is just going to be equal to, if I take the sigma squared out the front because it's just a scalar, it's going to be sigma squared times x primed x to the power minus 1 times x primed times omega times x times x primed x to the power minus 1. And I can't make any further simplifications to this expression because of the fact that omega doesn't have any particularly nice relationships with um, x. For example, if it was the identity matrix, it would just leave the matrix x as it is. So I can't actually simplify this any further. So this is actually the form of the variance of OLS estimators in the presence of heteroscedasticity. And note that this is not the same as the variance of OLS estimators in the presence of homoscedasticity. It is actually possible to show that the variance of beta hat OLS in the presence of heteroscedasticity is actually greater than the variance of beta hat OLS in the presence of homoscedasticity. So if you actually assume that you have homoscedastic errors, as most statistical software programs do, then you will actually underestimate the true variance of your estimators if indeed heteroscedasticity is present. So that's why it's actually important to actually correct for the presence of heteroscedasticity if you have it in your model. And essentially what these software programs do is they actually estimate the omega here and that then allows them to come up with an estimate of the variance of your beta hat OLS. And you can then use that for inference. But if you do not correct for the presence of heteroscedasticity, essentially the inference which you'll be doing will be wrong. So that's why it's important to note the difference between these two expressions. Okay, so that's the variance of beta hat OLS, but we know from the Gauss-Markov conditions that in the presence of heteroscedasticity, OLS is no longer blue. And in particular, we know that it is no longer the best linear unbiased estimator. There are other estimators which are better, and better by better we mean that they actually have a lower variance. And in the next few videos we're actually going to go ahead and derive these particular estimators. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to do a linear transformation on our model and then estimate OLS on that transform model. And that transform model should have homoscedastic errors.